Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's five o'clock. How, how lovely it is to see you guys, you peoples. Lord have mercy. Okay. <laughs> Let's not, do it. I'm not going to tell you what I've been agreeing to do. Um, yes. <laughs> okay. So for those of you who don't know what we're doing, this is Watch Me Work where the me and the title is you. And it's all about you and your work and your creative process. I'm Susan Larry Parks. We're giving a big thank you to the public theater and a big thank you to HowlRound because they make this incarnation of Wall Street work possible. And we've been doing it for over 10 years. We started in the lobby of the public theater and we've been chugging along ever since. And uh, thanks for Audrey to be here. I, it's, a, it's a day off for her and she took, she took time to be with us. Um, so what we do is we work together for 20 minutes and then we spend the rest of the hour talking with you about your work and your creative process. And that's basically what we do. So if you have questions for me about your work and your creative process, please, uh, Audrey's going to tell you how to get in touch. Thanks, SLP. Glad to be here. Um, so if you have a question and you're inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the raise your hand button, which is in the reactions tab, likely on the bottom of your screen on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. Um, and you can also tweet at us at, at watch me work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D, or you can tweet at the public theater or write to our Instagram. Um, and I think that those are the ways and SLP, my phone is in the other room. So I'm going to do our timer on my laptop today. Ooh, just so you know, <laughs> oh, you're muted. I'm having a glorious day right here. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, here we go. <clears throat>
Hello. Hey, hey. Hey. So. 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 Oh, so. we've got a question. I go for it, Alexis. Alexa, so sorry. Oh, can you unmute? Uh, there you go. There, does it happen? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. It's happening. It's happening, Alexa. Hi, it is so um, incredible to meet you. I was actually oh. at Joe's Pub last week. Um, oh. I couldn't have been more honored and grateful oh. and just inspired by your work. Thank you. Thank so. you. Thank you. We're so happy to be here. That's, you know, we bring in the love. I feel it so much. Um, so about me, um, I'm currently yes. working on my most ambitious script yet. It's my like fourth full length. I'm really excited. It's about discovery, transformation, reconnecting with yourself. Um, and so it's pretty personal and experimental. I'm excited to bring in different, you know, dance and music like you do and some magical realism. Mm. And it's really exciting. And I know that it's going to involve other collaborators. So I'm excited to finish my draft and show it to other people and audiences. But I'm also kind of enjoying having this little world to myself, as I'm sure you can relate to. And um, like, I want to share it, but I don't want to share it. Ah. So I'm kind of curious how you decide when to share your work with other people. Mm -hmm. And if there are certain questions you ask yourself or things you consider before kind of sending it um, into the world. Great question, Alexa. Fantastic question. Um, yeah, it's really good because the thing is, um, things I ask myself are um, maybe not so much as am I ready, right? But is it ready? Mm. Like at a certain point, and the child is, you know, whatever, it's five years old. I mean, unless you, you know, want to have that, you know, homeschool or whatever. He got to go to school. Okay? <laughs> He's ready. He's ready. He needs to be interactor. They need to be interacting, you know, on this, on that other level, you know, the next, they need to go next level. So is the work ready now? How you answer that question is how, and then it's, a, it's, then it's about you. Is the work ready answer? Have I done everything I can? You know what I mean? Or is it kind of like one of those drafts and we've all been there like, Oh man, I, I'm kind of like, I don't feel like doing a rewrite. I don't know like that. I need some help somebody to do my job. Now, if it's, if you're in that place and you're not, but if one finds themselves in that place of, oh, I need another, do another draft, but I, I, I work better when I'm around people, yeah. you know, sit your, sit your, you know, behind down or stand at your desk and do the, do your work. So if you've done everything that you need to do, yeah. then the work is ready. Yeah. Then you were ready to open the door. And even though it might be a little scary, uh, look, the door just opened and in comes the pumpkin pie festival. Hold on just a sec. I have to chastise. A kid walks in the door. He says, I'm not late. You said 415. I'm like, in what universe do you live in? Um, anyway, so, okay, but you're quiet now. Um, so, so the question is, have you done everything that you need to do, that you can do? Have you done that draft that might be kind of hard, but you got to do it anyway? Yeah. And then, and then, and then you are ready. And it, so it's not about external deadlines so much. You know, well, that, that producer said they needed it by Tuesday to consider it for their festival or whatever. Who cares? Because you need to do your work. So you need to find out some kind of way to get what you need to get done, done by a certain deadline. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. So just, I mean, and I really, I don't, I don't, I don't let it out the door until I've done the work that I need to do on it. Yeah. And can I ask, um, and we sure, talk all the time, um, I know I want to ask you questions. Are there people in your inner circle who you'll share those earlier drafts with, or do you really not let it out until, you know, you've done all the work that you think you can do? Sure. Inner circles right here. Um, so uh, last week or the week before last, and you will attest to this child. Um, so my husband was away visiting his parents in Germany and I had to work on the songs and not last week, whenever it was three weeks ago. 
And I just played them in the living room to the 10 year old. You know, I figured the 10 year old likes them. Ah, we're, you know, we got, we got that going. Yeah. Um, so it's just family, you know, right. Yeah. You know, or, or friends or, you know, you're close friends. Sure. Sure. The plays, you know, you read them to, you know, the spouse or, or the emotional support creature or. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're not, we're not talking like, Oh, you must not talk to anybody before. You know, it's, it's not that weird. Yeah. Thank you. You know so- what I mean? Sure. But sure. Yeah. But sure. Definitely. And you want to, again, Alexa, cause, cause I don't think we've had this conversation before. You want to ask the opinion in that close inner circle and then widen it out. Also, you want to ask the opinions of people who care more about you than they care about seeing their ideas in your work. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So you just want to be mindful of that. Totally. Okay. Awesome. Thank you again. Good seeing you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thanks, Alexa. Um, all right, let's go to Larry. Go for it, Larry. Good to see you, man. Good to Good see, see you, you again. Yeah. yeah. Hi. So um, you were just doing that. Uh, I don't want a voice. Um, so uh, I'll skip the part, but I, I had a, I've been having a lot of, I don't want to. Uh-huh. Um, uh, so I appreciate you calling that out. Um, uh, I, I am still working in Sisyphean fashion on my Sisyphus play. And um, uh, I had a, uh, you know, I, I think I, I've said here before that I, I tried to work it collaboratively and sort of, it's sort of devised and all this stuff. And I have just this ridiculous Sisyphean mountain of material. And through working it with other people, I've been kind of gone through phases of collaborating with different people on it. And it just keeps sending me, I guess, the wrong way. And Mm. so I had a mentor who just basically forbid me. Um, He says, you're basically hoarding. (laughs) He says, what do they do on hoarders? They take out the blue tarp. You can only keep what fits on the blue tarp. And he sort of forbid me. he, He forbid me from writing anymore. Yeah. He says, you have enough material. You're a director, you're a dramaturg. He says, like, you have to make this play work uh, with what you have, you know? And so I've, j- I've just started, you know, tearing down this mountain of material to try to just like, all right, what if it's just all there and I have to keep and give away? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so I guess I'm just curious if you have any experience with overwriting and um, um, uh, particularly, you know, I, f- I have a feeling like maybe this is just not even all for one play. Maybe I'm trying to mm. fit many plays in one play. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, so, yeah, I'm in a in a extreme place of I don't want to and overwhelmed overwhelmedness. Mm-hmm. And I need to edit. I need to give up my hoarding and. Um, uh, you know, let go of some darlings. Mm-hmm. So, uh, just wonder what mm-hmm. comes to mind in sure, your experience. Sure, sure. That. That's, that's a great, that's a great question, Larry. It's, it's no, I mean, first you have to know, like, where does it go when you throw it away? You know what I mean? And maybe we an, imagine it goes into the, the land, the time forgot, or the, the, the valley of the shadow of death. And it, you yeah. know, it, it dies a lonely death, like a worm on a sidewalk after it rains. If SLP doesn't come pick them up, I pick up worms off sidewalks um, and throw them back in the dirt. I hope it helps. I'm hoping. But um, where does it, where does your work go? You know, you writ, wrote a beautiful monologue or a gorgeous, right? I mean, I think we, 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 we we're slow to cut or prune sometimes because you think it's just going to go like somewhere awful. Right. I mean, is that what our, is that a concern? Um, yeah. Um, it, I mean, not a huge concern because I know like the writing doesn't go anywhere. It's on my computer. I can pick it up anytime. Sort of reminds me of, you know, I am, I, I, I got this whole idea and this whole cluttering thing that's it's in the script uh, because I am one and my dad is like a real super, super hoarder. Oh. And so, you know, it's like, take a picture of it, throw it out and you have the picture of it. All you need is the picture of it to remember it, but you don't need it in your house. So there are things like that, you know, where um, uh, 
That, that's um, interesting. You didn't tell me that part. So you 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 actually. So it's not just overriding. It's actual. Your your father is an actual hoarder. Did you just say that, or did I? Yes. Yeah. That's very interesting. Okay. Well, yeah. this is in in the in the writing world. When you cut, um, you throw something. You can imagine you're cutting something and you're throwing it on the ground, and you're throwing it on fertile ground. So it's not just about having it on your computer. It's better than that, actually. Mm. You're you're pruning and you're throwing it on fertile ground. That that action allows it to grow, cu- grow somewhere in 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 a, in a good place. It's not just about like. It's all in there in my, you know, in my chest of drawers or in my hope chest or whatever, you know, in that in my cabinet, you know, it's not like that. It's much better than that. Yeah. And you're throwing it onto some very fertile ground where it can bloom and blossom and grow and have a wonderful life and also be available to you should you want to pick from it and incorporate it into something else or use it as the basis of something else. Okay. So that's where work goes when we cut. So we cut with, we cut joyously. I, <laughs> I, I overwrite, but you know, so, I mean, I, ha- I mean, I have, I mean, I have drafts and drafts and drafts, you know what I mean? Of, 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 of things. And, and I mean, those of you who saw play for the plague years, you know, I mean, <laughs> that was a lot of material, you know, we have to, we had to prune down to make it digestible. We had whatever, 20 hours of material, what more? We had to prune down to, Audrey's shaking her head, prune it down to like two hours or three hours or something, you know? So we just know that when we discard something, it's being set up for a nicer incarnation. I think a lot of it, this is, first of all, that is so beautiful. And I'm probably going to steal what you just said. Many you don't have to steal it. I'm giving it to you, Larry. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Even better, even better. Uh, but that's just beautifully said and very much a metaphor for what's in the play. The, the other, I think part of it, I think I'm realizing as you talk is that a lot of, I think the clutter is trying to make sense and trying to be linear. And one of my friends gave me some very good feedback uh, because she was there sort of at the beginning that I was trying to work on this. And she said, when she, she read the draft, she's like, you're, it looks like you're trying to write a play. I thought you were just doing like um, some sort of theatrical event on a theme. I thought it was just like, you know, she's like, why are you trying to make so much sense and connect all, why are you trying to connect so much? And um, so I think there's a lot of connective tissue that I think I need to do, frankly, what I tell my students and trust that mm-hmm. it's theater and I can just jump from thing to thing Mm -hmm. uh, rather than having them, I don't know, explaining Mm -hmm. why they go together, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So that just came to mind. Could be, could be. That sounds like it would be also helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. I just uh, appreciate getting some new language around it. Thank you. Good question. Thanks, Larry. Um, All right, Erica, it's all you. Erica. Hello, I'm so excited. I saw, I saw you at Signature Theater where you were playing the piano with your husband. It's such a good experience. I always oh. go there to like do work because it's, it's quiet and awesome. Oh, right but, um, Thank you. But I had questions about, I am venturing into this playwriting sphere. I finished my first pilot like a couple months back. Uh-huh. And I'm curious, like, would it... Um, what advice do you have for like newer playwrights Mm -hmm. um one so that you because it's a just like submitting my work even the pilots that i'm writing now submitting them to festivals it's a lot of rejection you know you get Mm -hmm. it's hard not to be discouraged Mm -hmm. the other part of that is like what programs um are you aware of for like newer playwrights um Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then going off of some of the the feedback that you've gotten that you know that was talked about earlier mm-hmm. and sending your work out to be reviewed by other people do you always copyright your stuff mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. you send it to anyone mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. case mm-hmm. um someone sure. tries, yeah yeah need, need some ideas and 
or trying to, yeah. want to take the time to come up with their own. Yeah. 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 All good questions, Erica. So um, for, um, I suggest send your workout because you got to get in the habit of sending your workout to people you don't know, you know, sometimes, right. And you, you got to work that muscle. That's a muscle that needs to be worked. Uh, interaction with strangers who are going to perhaps hire you, perhaps put your work in their festivals, perhaps not. That's a muscle that we got to work as, as creative people. Um, definitely copyright your material. Definitely. It'll give you peace of mind. It'll give you just a feeling of, yes, I am taking myself seriously. You know, um, you can, I, I don't know, you know, there are many ways to do it. You send it to the copyright office. You, uh, there, you can look that up online, right? But definitely copyright your own material. That's a way to just respect yourself and respect your wonderful things that you're writing, okay? Um, I would suggest also, in addition to interacting with strangers, sending your work out there and getting your work copy, uh, send it to the copyright office. Um, I would also suggest, hold on, quiet, please, Durham. Lower your voice, sir, thank you. I would suggest that you also develop and continue to develop a close knit circle of folk. You know, um, you can join writing groups. And again, you're copywriting your material before you read it in the writing group. You know what I mean? Um, but you're joining writing groups so that you can have really good interaction with people um, who are also writers um, and, and other creative types. Here's a good writing group. We don't read our work here, but we do sort of support each other. Um, but there are other groups that would you actually will read your from your work. Um, that's super helpful. And then there are you know graduate programs and things like that that are good. There are also writing retreats. You know you can you can do like weekend writing retreats with 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 mentors that are taught, and there are oodles and oodles of them. Um, you look at catalogs like um, Omega, which I don't know where you live. I'm looking at that sunset going, where do you live, Erica? Um, where do you live? Oh, uh, hold on. Me... There you I'm go. So, okay, I'm just talking. There you go. Um, I'm actually in between Virginia and New York. I'm a photographer, too. So this is from oh. a protest. And I do oh, wow. sunsets, um, oh, a lot of sunsets. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. But you can look online and look for cool writing workshops that are like give you a week away with with a, a mentor writer or uh, like Omega in Rhinebeck, New York. If you're you know uh, up here, they have great writing teachers. Just a, if you want a sort of a short thing, Natalie Goldberg teacher, who is a wonderful writing teacher, teaches online. Um, that's a really wonderful way to to get to know people. And I guess the last part of that, that question was like programs. I mean, because when you're emerging writer, I look at all, I go back and I read some of the, the profiles mm -hmm. that people have had. They mm -hmm. submitted it to, it used to be the LARC where you, the LARC. they, clo they right. used to be closed and then mm -hmm. all of their programs got transferred to various theaters around New York City. It's so mm -hmm. sad. I was so mm -hmm. sad. Mm -hmm. um, but like now Crystal's given people, some information in the chat. Crystal's, Crystal from Adam's family. She says, what, Rattles? Well, I'm, I was trying to read your, what did you say, Crystal? Um, Rattlestick and Naked Angels. Is that what you were saying, Crystal? She's nodding her head. You see her? Could you unmute, Crystal, yeah, please? Yeah, got her. Yeah, go for it. Crystal, could you give us, yeah. Yeah, um, I, um, they have like different forms. Um, the Rattlestick does this thing um, that I believe Keith Randolph Smith is also a part of. Um, I, I don't know if they opened it up due to COVID and everything, but I think they if they haven't yet, they will. Um, and um, Naked Angels is a program that a friend of mine, he goes and he you can bring, I think, five or 10 minutes of your work and, and have that um, seen by other people. Um, so it's just like a place to just share work and like share whatever process that you're, you, you, you know, you're in wherever you're at in your process, you can share that. Those are great, great ideas. Yeah, those are two really good places. They've been around for a while. Um, 
and and they'll also Erica, they'll also get you in community. You know what I mean? They'll get you into the community, which is really an essential part of, as you know, you're a photographer. You know, you're in the um, you're in the visual arts community. You got to jump in to the, the the theater and performing arts community too. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm also taking. I'm in the Global Virtual Conservatory at Atlantic, um, doing okay. the whole okay. okay acting thing. But um, okay. oh, okay, there you go. Um, but it's just the I'm very. It's just hard because like you have the copyright and the copywriting thing just to make sure people don't just run away with an idea. If no, you even if you don't, it's just copy. It's just copy. It's just you. You you go online and send it in to the copyright office. Ain't no big deal. It's, it's nothing. Yeah, it's okay. it's not a big deal. You just do. It's just something you got to do. Like shoot, I gotta. Gee, I gotta. You know, get, I don't know what. Open my mail. I gotta pay my bills. I mean, it's, just <laughs> it's part of what we do. It's just along the. Li- I gotta type. I gotta make sure there are no typos in the script. I mean, it, it's just one. It's just another thing we do. It's not that. It ain't deep. That part of it ain't deep. So, no. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Thanks, Erica. All right. We've got about 15 minutes left, and we're going to go to, I think this is Aaron. Aaron, are you there? Hi. Can you help? Hi. Hey. Hey, Hey, how you Hey, 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 everybody. Hello, hello. Wow, this is such a, a wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much. So um, I am in the throes of uh, writing my uh, second um, full-length piece. And uh, right now I'm sort of in the mid, I'm kind of like that that mid-slump part of, of writing. Uh, and I've been here before and, and I'm used to finding different ways and different methods of bringing out my characters throughout this sort of mid-range slump of where we go now. I, I have an idea for the ending and how I want to move my characters to the end. And uh, you know, I've been kind of trucking along, making great progress. Now I'm sort of like, all right, where do they go now? So my question to you um, is how do you sort of move your characters uh, sort of mid-show to get to get to your ending or or is there's is there any sort of meth- method or tactic that you use or or inspiration that you sort of gather uh uh the sort of the the energy to move them or the inspiration to to move them to to your ending that's great man so you see so you're, you're finishing your second full-length piece and you're in that middle, that dip. Yeah, it's like if you're hanging laundry on a line and, you know, the sheet goes like that a little bit, right? Yeah, it's like a little bit. And right. it's great, man. You've been there before. Uh, you know it's something you're going to come out of. Um, right. you, have, you have tools and tactics to add a few more to your, to your arsenal of tools and tactics. Um, I believe in, especially if you know where, the end, where you want to end, right? So I believe in like, just running as fast as you can screaming. <laughs> That's good. Like, because when you're screaming, what are you doing? I'm letting go of the need to be good. <laughs> Just run as fast as you can, right? right? Right. as fast as you can. Like, how many pages do you think you got to go to the end? 10, uh, 30, what? I'd say, I'd say about uh, maybe 10 only 10 pages that's fantastic so you can like write like i don't know what like i don't know two pages a day maybe i mean right. or what what do you think does that do is that like cool? oh no yeah that's oh, hell yeah my 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 thing about two maybe one and a half pages a day okay okay so let's do one page a day right okay sure. this is the thing one page a day how long is it gonna take you like what do you think page gonna take you how long a day to write i half hour half hour great okay so you set your timer right what's your favorite part of the day to work uh it's morning morning fantastic okay so you set your timer right your timer 30 minutes right there you are right what do you do you type or you write longhand what do you do computer fantastic okay okay so here you are right okay 30 minutes you're gonna write a page (laughs) boom okay 30 minutes okay great i'm done for today I'll show up tomorrow. You're back at it tomorrow. 30 minutes. 
I mean, of course, you're not typing like that. You're typing much more elegantly than that, right? And you just right. keep hitting it. You can make yourself a calendar. Oh, look, you know what I love? I love paper calendars. I happen to have one right here. See, this is the month of April, okay? Mm -hmm. And you can, like, make yourself a paper calendar or, like, print one out. That's because somebody already made it for you, right? And you can just X off the days. And you can be like, huh? After the end of each day or each writing period where you've written a page, and then by day 10, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, you can have a party. Mm. COVID safe, you know, party. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? Okay. Yeah. You got it. You, you give yourself a reward. It doesn't have mm. to be, you know, you don't, we don't want you to spend money that we don't have. You know, we don't do that. We spend money, buy things, something you can afford and just hit it every day. 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. In 10 days, you're going to be done. 10 days, it's going to be what? What is it going to be? Whatever day it's going to be. 10 days from now can you can you put in some time today i can no no yeah yeah hey, I okay great Ugh, just run run as fast as you can right no thank and then you by so the time you get to the end it's gonna be like yeah right i love that I, that's like my favorite part writing there fade, you go fade out or, or end of play that's, that's there you that. go i like go. this huge weight lifts off so i mean I enjoy the writing process but yeah no that that helps that helps to kind of just focus on just the 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 writing part of it and, and getting through that because I definitely get to that that sort of closed wire uh, slump there and I'm like well why would why would they say that or how am I who, how who cares who uh, cares there you well, are that, trying to be a good writer oh will you stop right who cares who, why would they say that oh my god that's stupid who cares who cares who cares you're running really fast right who cares right you got to let go of the, the the need to be good. And embrace the need to be done. You just got to get it done. You'll be good later. Well, thank you. That, that helps. Oh, you're welcome. It really, it really, it really works. Thank you so much. I definitely you're welcome so much. Thank Thanks. You. Great okay. question, man. That's a really good question, though. Oh, a lot of us are there, right? <sighs> I live there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right, up next is either, is it Theo or Teo? We're gonna find out. Go for it. Uh, Theo. Theo. Hi. Hey, Theo. Hi, uh, so, oh God, okay. Um, I'm probably like the youngest here. I'm currently in high school. Um, we, were in, we were in high school once, weren't we, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Welcome. Well, thank you. Uh, I wrote this movie uh, script thing for my theater class, and I was really struggling with the motivation to write it and stuff. And it's co completely finished now, but I'm starting to rewrite the rewrite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm just kind of struggling like on how to make characters kind of piggybacking on what Aaron said, but uh, trying to really build on some certain scenes and sort of adds suspense. It is a horror movie. Uh, yeah, I just, I've never really done anything like this. Most of my work has been mostly like poetry mm -hmm. or more on the, yeah, it's, or essays and stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I'm just kind of confused on like where to start and how to gain that motivation to start writing so I can actually progress into, yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, the cool. If you've done poetry and essays, I mean, congratulations for trying something new because it's not easy, even when you're a youngster such as yourself. Um, and it's a good muscle uh, to, to keep working at, folks, those of us who are no longer in high school. Um, to, 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 to be brave enough to try something new is always a good thing. Um, essays, poetry, uh, are there characters in your essays or your poems? Would you say? Yes, um, okay. I I tend to do that. Okay, okay. So in in movies and TV shows and theater stuff, we our characters are like they're they're. It's all about the character. One could say just that's a yeah. thought experiment. Okay, it's all about the character. So I would say get really deep into thinking about what does what do my characters want. Hmm. What do my characters want? Like, have you heard of like Hamlet, the play? Yeah. Great. Okay. This is something we can talk about. So Hamlet, you think, well, 
you could talk, yeah, the plays about this theme and that theme and all this great stuff, right? But really, yeah, yeah sure. But to really write it in a really visceral way, I always suggest to folks, think about your characters. What do they want? What does Hamlet want? Hamlet comes home. Well, he want, oh, he, he comes home for his mom's wedding, or is it his dad's funeral, right? And he realizes, oh, shit, someone killed my dad. Oh, shit, I want to find out who the fuck that was. Excuse me, I'm using that language. But anyway. But no, you're good, you're good. You're good. But, but you right? Who, who killed dad? And then when I, when I, and what am I going to do about it, right? Mm-hmm. Right? So um, I realize I have like a sunspot on my forehead. Anyway, um, so we really get into the characters. There's a, uh, um, you know, geometry, right? Do you do, have you done geometry yet? <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm in okay. it now, yeah. Oh, great. Okay, well, this is perfect. <laughs> so in geometry, as if I remember correctly, in high school was about a hundred years ago for me. Uh, there's a, a two points make a line. You guys say that, right? In geometry, two points make a line. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Same as in playwriting, where your character is now. Can you see my finger? And where you want your yes. character to be. These two points, right? Mm-hmm. Where they are now, where they are by the end of the play. Make a line of dialogue. But um, bump. Okay. So mm-hmm. where I am at the beginning of my play and where I want to go is going to inform all my lines of dialogue. Okay, as in geometry, so in playwriting. That just, I just made it up, but it's true. <laughs> okay, so you got to think about what do my characters want? And that can really energize your writing. So try that, you know, make a, you can even make a list like character number one, they want such and such, and they're going to do this and that to get it. Will that help you? Yeah, you did. Thank you. And if I didn't, that's okay too. It's free. No, no, it's okay. No, no, you did. <laughs> Believe me, I've I've been having a really hard time doing this. This is my third rewrite of it. So. Oh, oh, good. No, no, no. Welcome yeah. to the club. We 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 rewrite often. We are, yeah, you know, right? I mean, we are writers. We rewrite. That's another like pro tip. Get used to it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Theo. All right, we've got about four minutes left and let's go to Crystal. Go for it, Crystal. Hi. Hi. I'm good. And who is this? Who is that? My daughter, Sophia. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Yes, how are you? Uh, I got sun on it. Yeah, I got, I know, I got sun. I'm trying to, it, it bouncing off the back of my computer. It's crazy. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, Okay, now I'm a little nervous. He's like looking at you like, mom. Yeah, be cool, right? Be, be cool. cool, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Your mom is so cool, girl. <laughs> mom is just so cool. Yeah, totally. Okay, go ahead. Um, okay, so um, in, a couple, in a couple of weeks or a few weeks, um, my play, The Father Chronicles, is going to be seen at the J-Cal in, in J- Jamaica, Queens. Uh-huh. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. The first... The first um, about a half an hour of it is going to be presented. Mm-hmm. And I have not been in the rehearsal room mm-hmm. at, at all. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of preferred that. Mm-hmm. As I'm, uh, I was asked to trim it, it down a little bit more. And I'm okay. like, oh, wow, like I haven't had to touch this. I've just kind of given it and mm-hmm. been okay with that because mm-hmm. it came straight from inside. And as I'm like, you know, trimming and working on it, I was like, I have I have to watch this um, as a writer, but right. also as a person who wrote this, mm-hmm. and from the place where I'm where it came from. Right, and it's also being shown a few days from the second anniversary of my father's death. Oh wow! And so I'm kind of like, I'm kind of not sure at how to proceed with going to like the tech, which will be the first time I'll see it done by the actors. And it's the first time that I'll hear the, that portion of the play heard out loud, which happens to be the father daughters, um, mm-hmm. not the father sons. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I I almost don't feel like ready to hear it. Um, Cause like the, just everything kind of came when, and it really, I don't know if she hadn't asked me to trim down some things or like touch it I probably maybe would have been fine but now it's like when I 
looked at the work and was like, oh, wow, like I, I still have to work on this. Like it's a, any other piece, mm-hmm. but like all of those things came to mind where it was like, wow, it's going to fall on the week. It's going to fall on that Monday. It's going to, and all of the, all of these swarming thoughts came and I just kind of felt like, how do I, um, how, how do I approach this as like a professional um, when it's, when it's, um, it's the most personal thing I've ever written. And it, 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 I, I just don't, I don't know how, how else in this process, how to approach it as, as a writer. It, it, I, I hope I'm making a little bit of sense. Mm-hmm. A little, no, I agree. <laughs> um, I'm, I would say that don't approach it as a professional. Approach it as an amateur with love. You know, that's what amateur means, right? Amateurs do it for the love, professionals do it for the money. So approach it like an amateur, approach it with love. Be, I'm sorry, I'm holding my hand. I'm, I'm having a lot of bounce back from the sun. That's okay. um, it's, it's during the, it's close, it's premiering close to your dad's death. Your dad's talking to you. Your dad's saying, hey girl, here you go. I'm so proud of you. Mm. You know, just be, be gr- grateful, even if the play, the, even if the content of the play is, you know, fraught and angry and wh- whatever the content of the play is, it's, it's, it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter. It's lining up so you can be aware of what's going on. Huh. And it's good. It's only good. Go and, 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 and bring, uh, bring loved ones that you can help, will help you process the moment or the moments, you know, um, if you want, bring some sage or put some a clove of garlic in your pocket, just in case there's some people who are less than kind, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Carry a, you know, you know, hold something that is, is dear to you or your daughter's name is Sophia. Yeah. You know, it, it, can, is it appropriate for Sophia to go? She's 16. Well, I, I'm just asking. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. No, no. I'm, no, I'm just asking. You know, what I'm saying. I know she's. Yeah. I was like, look at the high school up here now. I. Um, all right. Look, Jesus, Lord, have mercy. Okay, but you know, but if it's appropriate, you know, to bring, you know, family, for you know, bring people. Tell talk to the director. Tell her. Tell them. I don't know what what they tell them that you might only be able to stay for a few minutes or. You know, you might walk out. It's not about them. <laughs> you know, yeah. it might be hard for you. Bring okay. some snacks. Okay. Snacks. Very important. Snacks. Okay. Snacks. Yeah. Treat yourself like a treasure. Show up like an amateur. Got it. Got it. I got yeah, it. got it. That's what we're in. Look at us here. We're not doing this for money up in here. I mean, we would not be able to do that. Watch me work if it weren't for you know the generosity of the public theater and how around. But we ain't doing this for money. We're showing up like amateurs. Huh? Yeah. I like that a lot. I'm just making this shit up, girl. But you know it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of you. You're getting your work. You're getting your work produced, right? Because we know you. All these years, you've been working and working and working. And you just keep getting stuff done and keep getting stuff made and keep making work. You're so brave and strong and awesome and badass. Adult oh. word, children. <laughs> okay, good for thank you, me. though. Good thank for you. you so much. Thank, mm-hmm. you. thank you. Thank you. <sighs> we love you guys. What a nice, lovely turnout today. Thank you. What is this? The week before Easter, is it? So, you know, we're all here showing up. We are all here. 603. 603. I have a, one little thought. Um, it, it's interesting. I, I was, yeah, I had an experience. Um, you know, the mountains, you know, we think of mountains. I mean, how we have to move mountains and sometimes roll. And it was Larry was saying, roll a stone up a mountain and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And there's so many ways to move mountains or to sometimes you can walk around it. Sometimes you can enlist your community to help you move it or dig underneath it I realized the other day that you in the tradition of one of our 
religions, you can go up on the hill and you can die on a hill. And that's not bad. So if you ever have given everything you can to something, you know, your best work, you've done your best. You've been as kind and loving as you can be. You've worked as hard as you can be. You've done everything right. And it still doesn't work out. And you feel like I died on that hill. You're not in bad company. There's a whole tradition of people who die on the hill. And then what do you do next? You go down in the cave and you come back out better. So that's one religious tradition, but it's, you don't have to adhere to that religious tradition for it to work for you because it is a myth. It's also a myth. It's a story. It's a yarn. Okay. So just occurred to me the other day. Um, yay. Love you guys. Love you guys. Love this gathering of beautiful people. You're the best SLP. Yeah. Now you're the best. I'll see you next week. Okay. Mwah. Love you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks.